Chapter 7 is on fluids and electrolytes. Um, the first section is just sort of an overview of everything. Uh, you, the percentage of body water varies from person to person. Infants have the highest percentage of body water, about 75%, elderly about 50% or a little lower. Ironically, both infants and elderly are more prone to dehydration than ages in between, but for different reasons. Now, um, the body water proportions include those inside cells, that's your cell cytoplasm, that makes up some two-thirds of all of your body water, that's intracellular, and the remaining one-third are extracellular fluids, that includes things like blood plasma, uh, interstitial fluid, and several other examples provided. Now, these fluids contain dissolved electrolytes, salts. So this happens to be sodium chloride, and when you put sodium chloride in water, it actually dissociates into its electrolytes. They have electrical charges. Now, electrolytes contain numerous functions, but major ones include nerve function, muscle function, heartbeat regulation, and so forth. Now, fluid balance has to do with having the, the right uh, combination of fluid in versus fluid out. You have a built-in thirst mechanism. Your hypothalamus of your brain uh, contains the thirst center. I described the thirst mechanism briefly in your notes, and my description should suffice. Fluid sources. Number one, drink fluids. Number two, there are fluids in foods. And of course, the third source would be uh, water derived by chemical reactions in the body known as metabolic water. But metabolic water only provides about up to 10% of all the body water that we need. Uh, fluid losses. We lose some of the skin through perspiration and sweat. We lose through breathing because the lungs are moist. Uh, feces has various amounts of fluid. Urine has various amounts of fluid. So there's a certain minimum that we can't avoid. And of course, how much more we lose depends on the situation, where we are, what we're doing, and so forth. And your book describes some descriptions of what can cause greater fluid losses. Uh, you need to read over that. Now, the list of nutrients. Well, of course, water. Uh, the recommendations really kind of depends on how much you're losing, who you are, what you're doing, and where you're doing it. Uh, general recommendations are in the 8 to 12 cup a day range, but again, depending upon what you're doing, that may or may not be enough. A good way to tell uh, if you're well hydrated or not is by the um, uh, characteristics of urine. If the urine uh, is darker, darker yellow or even brown, it indicates that your body's trying to conserve water, it's concentrating the urine, and you probably could use to drink use to, uh, some more water. Um, diuretics, of course, would not suffice in that, that way, because diuretics can cause you to lose water anyway, uh, even if you're not uh, getting enough. So alcohol is a diuretic because it does interfere with the body's fluid balance and, and urine concentration. Sodium. Well, it's a major extracellular electrolyte used in nerve and muscle functioning. Um, I give you the recommendations and sources in there. Uh, potassium, K+, plus, is a major intracellular electrolyte also used in nerve and muscle functioning. Um, be sure to read what I give you on that. Now, chloride is mentioned very briefly both in your book and in your notes, but it's also important. Phosphorus, also known as the phosphate electrolyte, is used in all kinds of body chemistry. Um, it's also a part of DNA, RNA, ATP. It's also in the bones as calcium phosphate, and lots of foods contain phosphorus. Now, fluid electrolyte disorders, of course, include dehydration, simply not getting enough water. Uh, that section of the book does show you the, the urine color charts for being well hydrated or being dehydrated. Heat illnesses include heat exhaustion, uh, and heat stroke. Heat stroke is potentially life-threatening. Uh, the body loses so much water that it quits sweating and then the temperature just goes up and can reach fatal levels. Now the opposite of course is getting too much water. It is possible to drink way too much water and that's called water intoxication. It's pretty rare but when it does happen we tend to hear about it because it is so rare and unusual. Hypertension is actually discussed in the previous chapter but I like to discuss it in this chapter. Hypertension is high blood pressure in other words, a blood pressure uh, equal or greater than 140 over 90. That top number is the systolic pressure when the heart is contracted. The lower number is the diastolic pressure, the pressure when the heart is relaxed. Hypertension is often associated with sodium, 
people hear about sodium because sodium is involved in extracellular fluid balance, including blood volume and blood pressure. It's tightly controlled by hormones. Now, um, recommendations for hypertension involve a salt modified diet, and it is more beneficial to um, include a combination of lower sodium and higher potassium than just reducing sodium. Fortunately, that can be simultaneously achieved by choosing uh, fresher foods over highly processed foods. A general rule of thumb is that the fresher the food, the better the potassium to sodium ratio, and the more processed the food, the higher the sodium to potassium ratio, and this tends to be true across all food groups. And this concludes our review.